thing we're going to be using is thermal imaging. So why would we want thermal imaging inside of a ghost hunt? So then we can see the image. How so? In what way? Cold. Cold spots. We are looking for cold spots. Wow, it's like pulling teeth with you guys. Um, so <laughs> well, you guys overthink this. <laughs> so everybody likes to come here and like because they see like I'm very sciencey and techy that they, they want to start like oh what's the right answer? It's cold spots, like literal, like just the hair stands up on the back of your neck kind of cold spots. That's what we're looking for with this. This is a FLIR thermal imaging camera. This is what firemen would use to actually help come save people. So this this is not a phone app. You guys can go home and download. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. It's just attached to a phone because that's the ease of it. Um, so what we're looking for? Well, you guys should be able to see me in there, right? Red, orange, yeah. and yellow guy. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, gentlemen, but this is going to work here. That means I'm the hottest thing inside the video right now. Right. You know, yeah, yeah, sorry, guys. Um, you guys ought to see bridal parties. Like, they're on the ground laughing. Um, but anyway, so we're looking for blue and black. That's why I point out the red, orange, and yellow. Those blue and black areas, I want them to either move or to take shape. When I say take shape, I want a head, shoulders, moving arms, and legs. That's what I'm looking for. Um, so that's what we've caught with this guy in the past. Um, that's, yeah, welcome to my world. Um, so... Cool thing for you guys is when you guys get your video back, there's a blue dot bouncing around the screen. I'll kind of step off to the side so you can see some of the glass. Um, it should go straight to a piece of glass, either a windshield or on the building. Um, so that is there to show you the coldest spot in the frame at the moment. Um, I'm looking for 15 plus degree temperature drops. So tonight is about 67 degrees for us ambient. I'm looking for 52 degrees and colder. Um, so again, in the event that we don't get a full blown anomaly, like a person walking towards us, um, I could still find maybe a 40 degree or even a 30 degree you know, anomaly that should not be there in temperatures like this if that makes sense um so we're gonna be this is actually really light for a friday night and we're gonna turn up our spirit boxes and i'm gonna do a round robin with everybody to kind of see what's going on with your devices taking notes um if i see like we actually have some good activity going on i'll do one more round robin and then i'll bring us to the back to give you all of the answers this is where i start withholding information on purpose i'm not going to be giving all of you communication advice people some questions like what color is george washington's white horse like what we did with the big red barn yeah father that's who's mad. I figured. Ooh. Okay. We're going to have to calm down because we're not going to be here long. Um, it'll be fine. Oh, or yeah. I'm good. I just got to leave. Wait, should I be filming? Like, should I be filming around? Um, however you want to do it. So, with yours, because it's basically a general, the dwarves can come up from pretty much anywhere. Okay, so, so I can just say yeah. yeah, just nice and slow. Um, so, where the heck are we? We're in a parking lot. Congratulations, you guys made it. So, I told you I'd take you guys to weird spaces. This place used to be the Eliza and Charles Pinckney Mansion. It actually sat in the front of this space, facing East Bay Street. Eliza's <laughs> garden was lined up with five church restaurants. It came all the way across, and we were standing in the servant and slave quarters for the home. There's people walking by, you know, people walking by. Uh, so, who the heck were Eliza and Charles Pinckney? They had a son named Charles, they had a nephew named Charles. That's three different trucks in case you guys weren't keeping track. That's why we look for those secondary clues. I need to know in the events that we have the name Charles coming through, which one of these like the word Bob. So we get a couple of them um, that we're kind of identifying. Now, the son of the name from the signs in the Constitution from South Carolina, that's a big deal for us, but it's changing again. So this is why I ask you not to show them to me, because we're like I, this story should that's okay. I just keep wanting to like look at it and listen and yeah. all kinds of things. Um, so uh, they were signers of the Constitution for South Carolina, but you guys, I don't like politics. We're going to talk about Eliza instead. So if I don't bring it up, they normally do it for me in a very negative way on a spirit box. So I just give them the recognition they want and move on. Eliza marries Charles at a young age according to today's standards. I say that because if you're going to ask her how old she was when she got married, don't think of the colonial days of where she came from, like when ladies got married at the age of 12 and 14. Think of today's standards because the, the husband, Charles, is over double her age when they got married. So it's a pretty age gap then, a pretty age gap now. So it's kind of like that perspective. Um, anyway, she married him because her father was over in England and he thinks he's dying. He, you know, wants to see all of his children one last time. Eliza was trying to bring them all home. Eliza doesn't believe he's dying, so she stays put and gets married. It's 1744. You don't get married in that year to get a green card. You're not a country yet. So this is a true love story. Don't poke the bear on this one. There's no foul play, there's no love affair, there's nothing like that whatsoever going on with this marriage. It's a true love story. Back to Eliza. She was right. Her father did not die right away. Instead, he starts sending her gifts from England, right to where you're standing. One of those gifts happens to be the plant seeds of indigo. That's a plant that makes blue dye that makes our blue jeans blue. A lot of you are wearing it tonight, because that's how we use it today. When she got the seeds, she didn't know what to do with them. She had to learn from her servants and slaves how to keep it cultivated. 
not always hot here. Obviously, I'm chilly tonight. Um, but when she learned how to keep it going, she learned how to make the dye right here and then moved it to a cash crop. Got a hold of her dad and said, rice plantation prices are going downhill. We're gonna make a killing with this indigo. And we now have an international businesswoman during colonial days. This is the space I told you that I passed through every night to tell Eliza your names. So it is a matter of respect. This is the one I was gonna retire. Let's treat the place with respect. And I keep this one brief simply because it's part of the deal that I made with her. So that's why I only do one to two round robins to kind of see what's going on. And then we're on our merry way. So what I'm gonna do is with all the communication devices, I'm gonna give you a set of uh, focus questions. Um, now with those, it's remember that we have a lot of communication out here. So that does include the word list, the Ouija board, three cameras, plus my voice recorder. Uh, Christina, you might ask a question. I might get the answer on the voice recorder. We don't know where it's gonna go. That's the beauty of this. So that's why you need to tell me all the little things you guys are hearing about your spirit boxes. Like, oh, well I asked, you know, what color her hair was and it, it said Toyota. And I go, well, you didn't ask what kind of her favorite car was. You know what I mean? Somebody else did that. You guys are getting my point. I only said that because I think it's Toyota up there in the corner. Um, it's just in the top of my brain. But anyway, this, let me show you how these questions work. These are common things that we can ask and we commonly get the answers to. Um, so with Maddie and Mary, oh, that's kind of weird. Um, so the two of you have the same device, so you're going to have the same set of questions. Um, they're all about her death. She's pretty open about talking about it. You can ask about her age of death, how she died, where she's buried, which president was a pallbearer at her funeral. So those are four major questions that we get the answers to. If you go rogue, just make sure there's not a disrespectful or yes-no questions. Kind of keep that in mind. Um, we're going to talk about yours in just a minute. So uh, with yours, Christina, yours gives us one to two syllables at a time. You're going to find that out because you're not going to hear long phrases like the other two ladies. You're going to get like one or two words, one or two syllables here and there. The mansion's not here anymore. What happened to it? And if you get the what, we normally get two or three numbers of the date of the when. So, and it's a, obviously a very specific date. Um, so, and the eight is not part of that, just so you know. Um, I know where your mind was going. I can already see the wheel spinning. <laughs> um, so, you're also going to get the marriage questions with yours because, again, that thing will tell you all kinds of things. Um, you can ask Eliza how old she was when she got married, how old Charles was, or how long they were married. We've gotten those answers commonly among that device as well. Um, let's see, because you two, like, kind of have the, it's going to work similarly, you're going to get the same set of questions as well. The Eliza that I just told you about is the second wife named Eliza from Charles back to back. So kind of a jerk move if you really think about it. Two right? Elizas? Two Elizas, back to back, same year. First wife dies in January, he marries one I just told you about in May, five months apart. Now, ironically, both Elizas have a maiden name that starts with the letter L. You're going to be looking for the initials, E-L-P, in that order. You're going to be looking for the actual maiden name. I'm not going to tell you what they are. I need to know which Eliza we're dealing with, um, but you already have the word father and him mad. We're going to see how much other pieces are going to come out of that. Um, so to everybody just kind of get that out of your brain. I want to just let this stuff happen naturally. Um, so I think I covered all of the communication devices and all of the cameras. Sorry about the bright car. This just kind of wanted to pull up behind us. Um, I think you behind for just a minute. Everybody else, let's kind of spread out. Just stay away from the three vehicles that are here, and I'll be bouncing around with all of you on a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, definitely keep those cameras going. Either way.
with your camera, just so you know, I don't always follow up in real time other than to check and make sure you're recording because the camera is small. I send your videos to YouTube so I can watch them on a large computer and you guys can watch them on your TV. Okay. Um, so if I'm not following up with you as much as I am, say, the communication device people, that's the reason why. Okay. So I'd rather watch the video later when I can actually see it. <laughs> yeah, right now it's picking up like car windows and yep. puddles, mm -hmm. you know, temperature response. Alicia, you're the one I'm looking for. Let me see that word list. It's meant to be a scary thing. Against me, and then right before that, it would be neither. Yeah. So, the box to the right will give you all of the terms of connection. Oh, cool. Okay. You're going to scroll through. I don't have to tell you this. That's why. It's being informed, so you're going to get the full report this back. I'm not just going to give you what I think is all of them. Okay. Because, again, as far as your father, I don't know if it's even that. Did you ask it to tell a name? Mary, did you tell it to tell you their name? Tell, say, tell me your name. Tell me your name. Please. Please. Tell me your name, please. Watch. Don't. I know. You got your finger over top, though. It is not. It's uh, recording. You getting anything? No, it's uh, picking up like cold spots, like underground puddle. It picks up car windows. Uh, I'm guessing some of the building um, brick and stuff is cold. Okay. So it's just picking up the cold spots right now, but it's it's not seeing any anomalies like when you're right near them. I'm not hearing any names. Can you tell me your name, please? Can you tell me how old you are? Tell me how old you are. Don't be shy. We don't mean any disrespect. Can you tell me a name? No one's gonna listen to that. Let's see. Got a tiny ear. Yeah. Oh, see, now I, now I can listen to you. What was the president who served as a pallbearer at your funeral? Shouldn't want to talk to me. Can you tell me the name of the president that was your pallbearer at your funeral? It takes some effort, but you can do it. We just want to hear you, and we have equipment that can hear you. A lot of people walking around trying to listen to you. I've got a camera that could possibly see you. I feel like I'm hearing something, and then it, and then it moves. Yeah. I can't make it out. Can you tell me your age? How old are you? How old were you when you died? Did you have children? Can you tell me a child's name? Can you say something to make your presence known? Can you tell me how many people are here? Tell me how many people are here. Is it 10? I don't know. That's what I heard. I didn't hear it. But I think it's nine of us, isn't it? Can you tell me how many people are right here? I'm not really hearing anything. I'm it's hearing not easy, is it? 
No, I mean, I just it's, hear static. Yeah, I was listening to the other one, and it, it, it is hard to hear. It is. I mean, it's just constant static. Like I said, can you tell me how many people are here? I thought I heard 10, but I don't know what she heard. No, I'm, no, there was nothing. It was like it, your voice, and then it moved to static. I think both of us hearing different things. Okay. Another radio. But I asked those basic questions, how old they were, when they, when she died, and Did they know what the was president? the name of the president, who was your father at your funeral. Nothing. You're asking if you could just say something to make your presence known, and we don't mean any disrespect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just hearing um, advertisements. As you should. Yeah. yeah. And you Would the voice me... sound different than what we're hearing on the radio? No, you're going to tell me what the ads say. Okay. So if you hear a thing for Clorox bleach, I want to know that you heard Clorox be oh, bleach. Oh I Yeah, there's no way I could, like, remember everything, all the little blurbs. So uh, I might have to write those down because... So yeah. some people use their phones. Okay. Um, like they'll just type themselves a note or a text yeah. or whatever, yeah. um, or use a Keep Notes app or whatever. Um, all right. So if you're I'll hearing that. that much, like, but you're gonna see like, um, like for example, if you hear a Clorox bleach and you're like, come by Clorox bleach, you need okay. to tell me that you heard come by Clorox bleach because the word bleach might be something relevant to what happened to the mansion. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So again, it may seem silly. Right. But it may not be a direct answer to the correct. question that we're asking. And it might not okay. even be in the same context. Okay. So again, right. that's what I'm here for to okay. interpret. But now that you guys are like, yeah, you don't need to be listening to the static and listening okay. for disembodied voices. Right. Use the radio chatter. Think of that thing okay. as Bumblebee from Transformers, okay. if you're familiar with that movie. Yeah. yeah. So yep. that's the way to use that guy. I'll give you guys okay. another minute then. All I'll right. let you have a okay. better gist. Can you tell me anything about... No. no, no, yes or no. No, I'm not. Not a can you. Can you is a yes, no. No, it's not. It is. About the president that moved you. Can you? Yeah, I can tell you. No, I got to say that. What was the name of the president that moved you? I feel like you need to be louder. Okay. I hear a final document. Did you hear that? Final? I did hear a final document final or something document. like right. that. Eliza, I'm writing down final document. So it's picking up the corner window. Do you know where we are right now, the name of it? Do you know the name of the place where we're standing? Yes, I know that. Hmm? Yes, I know that. You heard that? No. It's a yes-no question. Do you know the place, name well, of the place? I was asking it to tell me the name of the place where we're standing. That's what you need to say. Tell me the name of the place that we're standing. What is the name of the place that we're standing? It's like I'm hearing snippets of music too. Eliza, what is the name of the place that we're standing? Meager. Interest payment. Eliza, tell me your maiden name. What is your maiden name, Eliza? So chilly. What did you hear? All right, did you hear that? Armed and dangerous. Eliza, tell me your age. How old are you, Eliza? I heard something involved. Was involved. involved. Elijah, tell me what. What was your husband's name? What was your husband's name? It was Pickney. We already know that. Huh? It was Pickney. We know that. No, I'm asking her to tell me, not you. Don't help her. <laughs> Elijah, what was your husband's name? I heard there Jesus again. Yep. I know that voice. Elijah, tell me your husband's name. Can you do that? That's Greg Laurie. Can you, can you tell me your husband's name?
really unnecessary. Elijah, what is your maiden name? Eliza, what is your maiden name? Elijah, tell me the name of the spot that we're standing. <laughs> Eliza, how old were you when you died? Oh, drop it. What? I dropped it. Okay. I'm gonna, I guess, stop recording or keep it on. So I started writing some things down after we had that conversation. I had final document. I had meager interest payment. I had armed and dangerous. I had involved. I had Jesus. That's the second time I've heard Jesus tonight. I heard it over there too. Uh, and then I heard uh, remained campaign not necessary. So what stood out to me the most out of that whole entourage you just had was final document. The reason why is we're basically standing where Constitution Signer was raised. So oh, wow. final document, I know it was amended how many times, um, but you guys get the point. Like that's okay. what stood out to me. But you're on the right track, yeah. so you're, you're hearing things. A lot of that is, is pretty vague to me and I don't see anything specific where I'm like, oh, that's this, that's yeah, that. Sure. Um, you know, they actually heard a number of uh, 520. And, and I'm almost 99% positive that May 20th is the date of Eliza and Charles' wedding. Okay. Um, so again, and they were asking that direct question. So that's, I mean, I know that Eliza died in the month of May, but I want to say that that's May 26th. Um, but I also know that she was married in the month of May. So that's where you guys can see where, like, I get these, like, hey, what's standing out to me kind of things. Um, so we have the number 19 as well, and I believe we got all the way up to a 29 on your end. Um, and we did get a 25 all the way up to here. So that definitely matches up with what the two of you guys were finding. I'm actually pretty excited about that, the fact that they actually match. Because um, again, you guys weren't always in the specific area, in the same area. Um, so we'll kind of see how this goes. Whenever I break out the tablet, by the way, you can stop your videos, give your hands a break if you have a camera. Um, so I'm gonna... Smells like Christmas? Uh-huh. Like uh, spices? Like, like, uh, like the spruce pine. Oh, okay. Like Christmas trees. That's what it smells like. your first three words what do you got i just have a date okay. well i have tumor yeah um date tumor and chin maddie you're up what do you got okay we were leaving the parking lot and it said father philip and then we were leaving that little alleyway and then it said charles and it said father again <laughs> And then we were coming down this alleyway, and then it said Bible 51. Mm -hmm. I'm like, um, okay, you know what? My, my grandfather's a preacher, so I can just kind of... Well, let me just point something out. Um, we are next to St. Philip's Church, oh. and the <laughs> father, Eliza's husband, is buried on the other side of that wall. Next. Uh, other than Coolidge, I heard help and Wales. Wales. Wales is interesting. Christine. Mine lit up as we were walking across the crosswalk. 
light. You went to orange. Yeah, oh. crosswalks are have all those electrical lines underneath. Okay. So you can ignore those. Sidewalks and crosswalks. Um, have we mm -hmm. heard anything on the spirit box that you had? No, it's just like a lot, a lot of, a lot of static moving in. across. Okay. All right. So. Um, it's got historical. Yeah, everywhere around here is historical. Where's the <laughs> is that lightning? Yeah, that's I think it's lightning. Yeah, lightning. Right, you like um, so EMF lightning. readings in here. So I want things above the green and yellow on your end. I want it to the halfway point or higher, just because of where we are. The lamp posts are going to make it go off. Patrick, that means your readings are going to be above a seven. So don't give me anything below a seven. Okay. Um, so very interesting. Um, oh, one thing I did want to point out. So uh, when we're in between these spaces, I'm sure you guys notice that there's giant QR code stickers on most of your devices. Um, that's actually my business card. So um, yours would be on the back, Mary. Okay. Um, basically, it has my website, email address, all my social media, so TikTok, Facebook, all that crazy stuff is on there. Um, I don't do paper business cards because you guys just throw them away. Um, so this way, it's already in the back of your hand. You can uh, tap your phone to it or scan it if you have an iPhone. Um, so again, I just make it nice and easy. And Rick's like, holy cow, that's weird. High tech guy does not use paper. Um, everything is electronic with me. Um, so I just like to point out because some people, I just got those like, I don't know, three weeks ago. So I was like, what are these giant stickers? Like I keep hearing like whispers about it. And I'm like, oh yeah, scan that shit. Is that more lightning? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's behind us. It's like bad right now. It almost looks like somebody is uh, like taking pictures. Yeah, and that yeah, light. I know the flickering. lighting is very odd. Do we need to do a quick check lamp? on the weather? Is it was lamp? drizzling before. I mean, yeah, it's like, you know, strobe lights, but nothing like. I got some nothing. We're good. Earlier before we got here, <coughs> so you didn't get any stick figures yet. No, because I mean, I'm. Everybody's always in my way. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is the space that I'm retiring this year because every ghost tour comes down here for one. Um, and secondly, uh, by the way, if you have a camera, let's get that thing up and running. Just uh, again, if other tours are going to come through here, they're going to come out of that ivy wall, or they're going to come in the same way we did. Mm -hmm. um, so again, we'll split the seas when they need to cut through us, and we just try not to make it noticeable that we're filming them if you guys can get the point. Okay. Um, so, but with the filming, uh, just try to go down one side of the alley or the other and try to keep your cameras as still as possible. Um, only because the empty the alley's empty right now, so hopefully if we capture something, it's gonna be very obvious of what that is. Um, so the less you move around in a tight space like this, the easier it is to be able to find it. What do you got now? Wyatt? Who the hell's Wyatt? I don't know. I don't either. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> um, so his name. I know, right? Uh, so this place is called Philadelphia Alley. So it used to be called Duelers Alley. This is where some of the duels used to occur for the city of Charleston. No, hang on, let me get through it. You're close. Um, so, <laughs> she's trying to beat me on the punch. Um, so here's how this goes. Every to ghost tour comes down here and tells the same story. I'm going to tell you the same story, only I'm going to give you some different details because you're ghost hunting. You're not on a campfire marshmallow kind of ghost tour, right? Um, so you kind of need that for your ghost hunting pieces. So here's how it goes. Doctor moves down here from Rhode Island. So Ava's going to be looking for the letters R-I for Rhode Island while we're here, in that order. Um, so I'll explain more as we kind of go through this. Uh, he moves down here. His name is Dr. Joseph Brown Ladd. Those of you listening to Spirit Boxes instead of me, if you hear the song uh, Brown Eyed Girl, and that's the lyric you hear, um, it's not coincidence. It's part of his name, and we get it all the time. Um, so kind of take that for what it's worth. Now, Dr. Ladd moves down here because he's supposed to get married to his fiancée, Amanda. Amanda just inherited a bunch of money from her dead parents. She has an attorney helping her out with all of this cash flow. The attorney thinks that Dr. Ladd is just after Amanda's money. So he tells Amanda to get rid of the doctor. So Dr. Ladd moves to Charlestown to prove that he's not after Amanda's money. So on his way into town, his coachman basically set him up to be robbed and killed. It wasn't a good start to his stay in Charleston. Somebody was walking by and seeing what was about to happen, and his name was Ralph Isaacs. I stop on Ralph because he has the same initials as where the doctor came from. So, this is exactly why I have the device that Ava's using. I was getting the letters R-I all the time on regular spirit boxes. I wanted to get a verification that it was the letters R-I, and we've gotten it. Over the past eight months, we've gotten it about half a dozen times whenever I bring up Ralph's name. Back to Ralph. He tells the doctor, dude, I know this guy, the coachman. He's going to try to kill you. He's got a gunman inside. Come with me. I got friends at 59 Church Street. You can stay there, and you'll be safe and good to go. Doc took him up on the offer, and the two gentlemen became friends. The longer the doctor stays here, the more money he's making, proving his point that he was not after Amanda's money. Now, Amanda gets wind of this, and she's moving down so they can be married. Dr. Ladd became known as the Whistling Doctor, not the Snapping Doctor. So, so every ghost tour that comes down here will tell you to listen deeply for the whistles. I'm going to explain why we're going to get them in a much different way. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. Back to Dr. Ladd and Ralph, they go see plays together. They cannot sit next to each other because the doctor makes more money. That's the hierarchy of Charleston. He gets better seats. 
They talk about these plays on the way home. They go see Richard III one night, and they're arguing over the new actress that they just saw. Dr. Ladd thought she was great. Ralph didn't. The argument turns into Ralph insulting the doctor's fiance, Amanda, back home in Rhode Island, and gets really ugly, and they go their separate ways. I told you Ralph has friends around town. They, you know, he's got friends at the newspaper. So he goes to the newspaper and puts an ad in the paper telling the whole city of Charleston what he thinks of the doctor. Kind of a, you're a disgrace to society kind of bullshit, right? Doctor saw this ad, but rebuttaled with, let's go to Dooler's Alley. We're going to settle this, and somebody's going to die. So they came down, they took their ten paces away from each other, they turned, and the doctor pointed his gun in the air, and he shot. He did not want to kill his friend. He just needed the courage and bravery to show up to the fight. But Ralph has his one bullet and his gun still, and he puts it in the kneecap on the dock. Dr. Ladd doesn't die, but he dropped to the ground. His friends picked him up, took him home to 59 Church Street, where he actually dies 10 days later. Um, by the way, uh, so Stephanie and... Oh my god, Patty, you guys cannot face your cameras next to each other because Stephanie's camera can see all of your flashing dots. So we'll just... So if you guys were faced, like, pointed at each yeah, other... Yeah, I just saw something. Yeah, that's going to come from her camera. Okay. We can't see him with our own eyes. Your camera can see it, though. Um, so they took him home to 59 Church Street. He dies 10 days later after refusing medical treatment. Um, and that was November 2nd of 1786. So we're getting pretty close to his alleged duel date. It depends on which version of the story you're reading. Some say six days, some say ten. Now, why did he refuse medical treatment? It's 1786. Gunshot wounds are a lot different back then than they, what we think of a gunshot wound now. And he's a doctor. He probably just thought he had lead poisoning and tried to bleed it out, but he failed because he died. So... We do have three cameras running right now, plus my voice recorder. If we're going to capture a whistle, that's why we're going to get it. That's why we don't stay here and investigate. Um, so I'm going to tell you more about that whistling, that if you're going to try this on your own and use the voice recorders from your phone and walk all the way through, just keep in mind that every local knows this story. It's another reason why I'm taking it out. Anybody taking, walking up and down Cumberland Street or Queen Street throws a whistle down the alley. We all do it. I do it every single morning when I'm done with your data. Um, so, so, again, we all do it. Um, and it's, that's especially since I got thrown out of here. Talk about that, because that's the fun part of the story. <laughs> yeah, not I want to hear that. This. I know. <laughs> this alley, this will kind of show you how my research kind of comes into play, too. So the alley didn't go all the way through. But this way. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> the alley actually had a wall up here. So it was halfway between us and Cumberland Street. The reason why is because this used to be called Cow Alley. This is where they kept the chickens and cows, all the livestock. So imagine all the chickens and cows down here, and the bricks down at the other side are older than the ones you're standing on right now. Those are sun-dried bricks from slave children. There's a full handprint from a slave child down there and fingerprint swipes and others. And I used to take my groups through that, like all the way through there, before I knew that I was actually out of bounds. Um, so the reason why I, I would just show it off was simply because we all need to see how far we've come from slavery, not for anything supernatural, because I treat that brick the same way I do a grave. That's the last place you're going to find that kid. He's not there staring at a brick in the afterlife. He's with his mama somewhere. Um, so. November 26, 2020, my entire group of 10 is huddled around a brick waiting for something to happen. I'm trying to shoot them along, and it's the same size group that we have right now, right? So kind of imagine that because it's also outside the kitchen window of the beautiful mansion at the end of the alley. I didn't realize I was out of bounds. I was new at this. So the what new one. by out of bounds? Tours have guidelines of where we're allowed to go. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's well, considered I... residential. Ah, uh, okay. I'll so. Um, the new owner of that mansion came out screaming. My daughter was on the tour that night, and she thought it was hysterical that Dad's getting yelled at. Um, so we moved on. <laughs> the next day was Thanksgiving. I don't tour on Thanksgiving because before I started doing this full-time, I actually worked in upper retail management for the biggest retailer in the world, uh, managing over 300 people. I don't do Thanksgiving because you guys like to fight over towels on Black Friday. Yeah, so kind of <laughs> keep that in mind. So I don't do Thanksgiving anymore. Yes. The next day was November 28th. So I called my partner that I had at the time that actually brought me into tourism, and I told him what happened, and he laughed at me just like my daughter did. He said, you're only allowed to go down halfway, dude, or you got to reroute the group. So I decide, I'm sold out again, I'm going to reroute the group. What I told him is, I don't believe in the next story because nothing's ever happened to me over there or my equipment, and I'm a vampire guy, not a pirate person. We're going to be discussing pirates next in case you didn't catch on to that. So before we left the space, somebody with a spirit box, here's the name Anne. I didn't tell them who we were going to be investigating, the famous female pirate, Anne Bonnie. So I was like, well, hot damn, maybe we're going to get some. We get around the corner. I told them a little bit I did know about piracy. Somebody else with a spirit box, here's a number 300. I don't know what that one means. I write it down. I go do the research the next day for them. We were there November 28th of 2020, and Bonnie's trial for piracy, November 28th of 1720, the exact 300th anniversary of her pirate trial. Now, some of you guys are like, wow, that's cool. And I was actually pissed off. Let me explain. I have a master's degree in creative writing. Even when I'm writing fiction, and especially when I'm doing this, I need facts and data. Pirate stories come from pirate lore that was written over a hundred years of when these events allegedly occurred. 
Do you know how many damn books I've had to read on pirates to make sure this little 15 minute snippet that we're about to go through is legitimate and the things that we're about to cover? <laughs> I've read more books on pirates, watched more documentaries, and I'm even playing video games dealing with pirates now. Just because I want another different version of the story. Um, to just kind of see how they all match up. Everything we're about to discuss at the next location has a minimum of two resources to verify the information. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. We're also, and again, it's a 50-50 roll of the dice if she'll even be there. We're hopefully going to also get bleed over from here over there. It happens all the time. So kind of keep that in mind. One last bit before we leave the space. It's not super hot down here tonight because we're out of the summer. The gate behind me. Not everybody knows why this entryway is here. So remember I told you that the alley didn't go all the way through this way, right? Because there was a wall up there. In the event there was a lo loser to the duel down here, this was the shortcut to get to the cemetery on the other side of the wall. Otherwise, they'd have to drag the dead body all the way down to Queen Street and then double back. So they created this wall. The wrought iron was probably put here in the early 1900s, but you can see that the archway was obviously original to the wall. Um, so again, it's just a kind of a rite of passage now, so it's just like an easement. Um, nobody uses the gate, but not a whole lot of people know why this was even here to begin with. Um, so just an interesting piece of information because uh, sometimes we'll get things relevant to that gate before we leave the space to go learn about rated R pirates uh, Anybody see or hear anything on our devices before? Okay, perfect. All right No other crazy words. Yeah, all crazy words like what deer d-e-e-r okay. phase carbon That's A lot of nothing to me. Yeah, okay Let's go do some crazy pirates. Let's go up and around the corner. Should Let's I stop this or keep going? Um, up to you guys on the video because we're just going up and around the corner if you want to keep them going. Just kind of be cautious when you pass by other people. Okay. I can't hear this well I'm listening to him. So I turn the volume down. <laughs> You're like, I got that story. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm intently listening to the story. So. Good for you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah. All right. What are you doing? Why am I holding this? Oh, Lord. God, oh, it smells. Watch your step, man. Gotta bring your center around. What does a pirate do? Can you tell me what a pirate does? I like your 520 that you've heard earlier, but I still have to verify it. Um, so the next stop is the spot where we will be doing that blindfold test. It will be our last stop. Um, the cool thing is, is that they've added something new to this. So 
it is a VR AI type of piece. So virtual reality with artificial intelligence mixed in. So in essence, uh, there is a, an app that uses the magnetometer of your phone, basically the EMF around it, um, just like we're reading tonight with, with Patrick and Christina's device, right? So it's going to take that and interpret it and make an image out of it oh. that has never been seen before. Oh. <laughs> Come on. I can't make this shit up, guys. It says what image. It says oh, image. image. <laughs> they know we're here. They know what I'm about to tell you because I just kind of give us the preamp here. Yeah. Show us. Um, show us. So they've with, heard this. They've heard this. They've heard this before. before. Testing. We are testing it because it's new. I've only been doing the VR piece for two, maybe three months at this point. It's an image and testing. Now, with, what's going to happen with this is that the person that's blindfolded is also not going to know the history of the space. Um, so I'm going to basically sit Maddie down Wait. and I'm going to blindfold her and put noise canceling headphones ah, over her ah, ears ah, and she's not going to know the history of the space at she's all. super excited. <laughs> so the other piece is going to go over to Patty. So with that, you're going to have the VR piece. So the two of you are going to sit on the bench and you're not going to know anything. Um, the rest of you are going to come with me like 10 feet away. I'll teach you the history for a few minutes, not okay. much. Um, and then when we come back, we're going to talk to Maddie as if she's our ghost. And she's not going to know what to tell me other than what she hears. So this part should look like oh, a conversation. Wow. And then what Patty is seeing is going to hopefully come up as kind of like the complimentary piece to what she's saying. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Now this is also all meant to go to one person, but that is too much stimuli for people that don't do this on a regular basis. Um, so the, the basically the VR headset is meant to replace the blindfold. So it goes to one person, but again, that is way too much going on. So when my daughter and I tested this out, you know, she was just like, Dad, that's going to be too much for people that don't do this, you know, because she comes on the tours a lot. Um, she's like, maybe we need to separate it. And I was like, that's actually a really good idea because I was normally just doing two blindfolded people. And then when we got the VR, we just did one blindfold, one VR headset. Does the um, virtual reality get recorded also to where we could view images. it? You will get the images. That'd yes. be cool. Um, so I will show you the images that Patty sees um, <laughs> through this and then like at the end of our night, but it will also be in your data set. So good question. Uh, so sometimes we get one image, sometimes we get 10. Uh, we never know how it's actually going to turn out. So, and with this, I will tell you that the blindfold session is about 30 to 32% accurate as far as, you know, questions being answered in real time, like a conversation. And, but the VR piece is about 45% accurate. So it is more accurate than what is being shown on TV. Um, so, and again, that's me measuring results in different spaces. Uh, but we're that's going cool. to test that out at the next location. But Can let's get into why we're here. Part of that. Uh, did we hear anything along the way here, is by the way? On? Yeah. Really Nothing cool. along the way here. Besides the craziness that you just showed us. Rope. About some pirates that were hung. Nice. Love it. Did you get anything out of yours on the way here? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, on the way over, yeah. I got uh, the name Jesse. I got name, uh, the word husband and robot. <laughs> a combination. It sounds kinky to me. <laughs> Jesse, husband, yeah. robot. <laughs> All right. So, let's talk about why we're here. Um, the little tiny building up there on the front with the crosses on it, those are not crosses. Those are earthquake bolts. That is the gunpowder magazine. It is a museum now, just so you guys know. It's a great five bucks to spend to get out of our heat or cold. Here. Um, so those crosses, the earthquake bolts, if you're not familiar with what those are, they're basically turnbuckles. If we have another earthquake, like what I mentioned from 1886, which we have not, by the way, you can tighten the turnbuckles and it's supposed to tighten the building so it doesn't incur any further damage. It's a great idea, it just doesn't work. <laughs> the only reason I bring these up is because it's part of the reason why we're here. Those earthquake bolts are the first set of earthquake bolts that Charleston ever put in, simply because that is the oldest sure. government building in South Carolina. So, it was finished in 1713. We are here simply because that building was being constructed at the same time that Anne Bonny was coming here to start her new life. This is something that she would recognize. For those of you that watch the TV shows, they use that Boo Buddy, right? So that's the teddy bear with the K2 meter in it, like Christina's device. So they use that because the child would recognize it as a toy. Think of that same concept with this building. We do have other buildings around that same time era, just not many of them. Um, so again, we're hoping that she's going to be here. That's, this is the big roll of the dice, but you're hopefully going to also hear things from Big John. The building took 10 years to build. Does that sound like our government? Small yep. building, 10 years? Yep. Nope, not at all. <laughs> um, so, but anyway, the history begins right in the middle of the building's construction. Try to follow me. There's a lot of twists here. Here's how this goes. 1708, a young lady moves here from Ireland. She comes here from Ireland, but her name is Anne Cormac. She comes here with her dad and his mistress. The mistress is Anne's mother. 
Are you guys with me so far? The three of them are running away from her father's angry wife. How pissed was the wife that she booted them out of the damn country? Yeah. So, and with that, they landed in Georgetown. Dad bought a plantation in Georgetown. That's between us and Myrtle Beach, in case you're not familiar with our coast. But Mom dies pretty quickly. So that means Dad is now sending young Anne down here to Charlestown to sell things from that plantation to keep things afloat. Hence the familiar building, why we're here. Back home in Ireland, Anne was a badass even when she was a child. They say when she was only seven, eight, nine years old, remember it's pirate lore, nothing is ever going to be exact when it comes to ages, um, they say she killed a servant with a knife to the belly. Can't tell you how many times we've had servant, knife, and belly show up on three different devices, and nobody knows what the other people have got going on. I know you had belly earlier, but we I also had knife. Far. Here? Yes. I had knife on, I had knife <laughs> before, after. It's almost like a pre pretense, right? Yeah. All right, fast forward. The building's done in 1713. 1715, pirates are starting to come through Charlestown. Anne is stoked. Let me tell you why. She's going to fall in love with one of these pirates so she can earn her freedom, just like a man. It's a man's world during this time frame. And I said the first guy she's going to fall in love with is the first guy. And I say that because there's a handful. We're going to go through them all. That's what makes the story so damn interesting. The first guy is James Bonney. You already know where this one's going, right? Because I've already mentioned her full pirate name. Dad didn't approve. He's a filthy pirate. They run away to Jamaica. They get married. Anne Cormac is now Anne Bonney. That's where the name comes from. However, when she gets down to Jamaica, she realizes that her new husband is not the Captain Jack Sparrow that she was hoping for. This guy turns out to be a privateer, which means he's a spy for the British. He's a coward. This isn't what she wants. A few years go by. She falls in love again. Guy number two. This is John Rackham. Everybody calls him Calico Jack. This is the guy they based your Johnny Depp character off of. He's the one who this guy was. So he has his own ship. He has his own crew. And wants to be part of the crew. He can't put a female on a pirate ship. Does anybody know why? That's bad luck. Thank you. Wow, you guys were yeah. quick with that. I know. Yeah, that, I know. see the wheel spinning of all the dirty thoughts. And I'm like, all right, let's keep it family do. friendly. Um, but anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I can do that now. Um, thanks for pointing that out, Nick. You jerk. Um, <laughs> I'm just reading her thoughts, everybody. It's okay. Some of you asked the abilities. Those were her thoughts. Um, but back to Anne. So, where the hell was it? Oh, the dirty. So, she, he makes a deal with her, basically. If you dress like a guy and look like my crew, then you can be part of the crew. She's okay with this because Dad used to cross-dress her as a boy apprentice back home to hide her from his wife. She gets it. It's a man's world. But we're all adults here. Put two and two together. She's going to be female in his quarters. She's eventually going to get pregnant. You cannot have a pregnant pirate dude on the crew. Somebody's going to figure out that she's a girl. They'll get rid of Jack. They'll vote him off because there's a democracy on every ship. Before she starts the show, he drops her off in Cuba. Have the baby here. These are friends of mine. They'll help you out and come back later. We'll figure it out. She goes and has that baby but returns without a baby. We have no idea what happens to this child. None of those damn books I've ever read, the stats and facts of them, ever told me what happened to Anne's first child. So you can ask. I just can't prove it. So if you get a direct answer, it's personal to you back to Anne. She comes back without that baby, but also dressed like a female. This makes Jack pretty angry. Now everybody's going to know he let a girl on a ship. So, to make him even more mad, because I've already told you her mentality of just killing people at will, she's going to go flirting with the pirate crew that he just captured down below deck. Guy number three. Guy number three turns out to be a female, dressed like a guy, to be part of the crew that Calico Jack just captured. So now we have two females, dressed like males, on the same ship. Her name, Mary Reed. She went by Mark Reed to become a pirate. Her and, her and Mary became friends, possibly lovers. We're not going to really know for sure because of the time frame. But the British find out where they are. They send a whole fleet of ships to come take down one measly pirate ship. Rumor is that Anne and Mary were the only two pirates not drunk enough to come up and fight with one bullet flintlocks because they haven't, they don't know how to use a cannon jet, basically. They haven't been pirates for very long. Two ladies with one bullet guns are not going to take on a whole fleet of Navy ships. They get arrested. As they're being arrested, she looks at her captain and bow, Calico Jack, and she says, I'm sorry to see you here, but if you would have fought like a man, you wouldn't be hanged like a dog. The word dog shows up a lot on communication. Back to Anne and Mary. The judge wants to see the two men that fought back so violently on their own. He's already tried and hung Calico Jack and the, and the drunken pirates that wouldn't fight. They're dead and gone. The two ladies go in front. They reveal their gender, hoping to save themselves. The judge does not give a shit that they are female. He's still going to hang them. We plead our bellies was the last thing they shouted because you cannot hang a pregnant woman in 1720. It's illegal. So he sends them both back to jail and delays the hanging. Dad is still up here in South Carolina with all of his Irish money. He bails out Anne and brings her home. She remarries. That's husband number two, but guy number four, because we're going to count Mary, because we don't really know. Yes. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> she has four kids and dies at the age of 84. Very abrupt ending, because we don't know jack shit about her after her pirate career that I can actually prove. There are too many theories out there. We don't even know what her name changed to or if she kept it real. We have no idea. Mary Reed died five months later in that Jamaican jail from whatever pirates died from in a Jamaican jail. Use your imagination. Most books will tell you that it was fever. I say let's make it romantic and call it scurvy. Why the hell not? 
Here's what I left out of the story. You're writing all kinds of shit down. I want to know what that no, is. No, I'm just, just no, uh, no. I'm, I'm, I'm also a, trying to keep keep track too. Oh, so okay, I'm good too. You. I mean, Take I have notes. a name that I wrote down earlier, but so most of this is just details. Of Interesting. Here's what I left out of the story. You can ask whatever you want to here. This is not a prominent English woman that you guys need to tiptoe around. So the things I left out of the story on purpose, the names of Anne Bonnie's parents. I called them the father and the mistress. So you can ask what those names are. You can ask what the name of Calico Jack, Jack's ship was. I did not tell you what that was. The name of the city where Anne grew up in Ireland and the color of her hair. Everything else is fair game. In the event that the rain gets any further than this, as far as like being heavier, we'll go across the street to the parking garage to save the equipment. Is that fair? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, safest place to stay dry is probably underneath those trees. So let's get to work. Is there an old building here? Ooh, that's that's an apartment building. Right, but it's got like the, the way the bricks are cut out, it almost looks like there was so, a roof with an attached It was. So okay. it actually attaches to the powder magazine because in between being a gunpowder magazine, it was uh, like a textile, a mercantile, law offices, um, those kind of things. So okay. yeah, it's got like that roof pattern. Yep. And you just changed it. Okay. And the bricks are a little bit different. So it was probably that full edition later on. Uh, What color was your hair? What color hair did you have? What was the name of your child? Oh, there we go. <laughs> working over there. It's called Proximity. Um, we did get the name Jack, so I'm excited about that. I don't know who Vicky is. I've seen you have the word. I mean, yeah, Vicky, Vicky right and <laughs> name Martin. 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 That was from. I don't know either. Um, I really appreciate you guys like jolting over there. That was really quick of you, and like, thanks for the suggestion. I appreciate that. 
What do you got now? 2.3. Right oh, here. that's because you're near the electrical pole and the parking meters. So um, I didn't really give you a chance to do a fair, <laughs> fair warning. Um, so we are going to cover the answers here real quick, and okay. then we're going to move on to the next location. Since you guys are all listening and watching your stuff over there, I know we're not going to have a whole lot of footage from this location. Um, some of you were filming from over there, which I thought was hysterical. Um, so again, appreciate that. Here's how this goes. Oh, by the way, when I give you guys a heated warning at the top of our night, this is part of the reason why is this location. Let me explain. Two years ago, month of September, I took my group to the back, like I normally do, um, just to stay out of all the other tours way, and the kid next to me starts to faint. So he, I say kid, he's like 21, 22 years old. I have to pick this kid up by his armpit so he doesn't hit his head on the ground. He's going down that fast. Um, so his boyfriend picked him up from the other side of him. We brought him over to this wall. I got him some water. He's feeling better. And I then told him the history of Ann Bonnie, like I told you. So this used to be the last stop. So once I was done with the history, I, I told them, go spread out, have some fun. And I would tell like three stories here. So this was their last hurrah. Then two gentlemen pull me aside and say, Nick, we have to tell you, we are two transgender males. I had two females dressed like males, just like Ann and Mary in the story on the tour. It made sense, but it's still unexplainable. This is the weird shit that I see and why I give those heated warnings. I never know what's gonna happen. So psychics and mediums that will show up on the tour, uh, if they don't tell me that they're a psychic and a medium and I accidentally hand them a spirit box, they're probably going to pass out because they have two different pieces of communication and it's overload. Um, I can't tell you how many have gone out on gurneys, like wow. like going to the emergency room, not dead, but Is that gurneys. what happened with that gentleman? Was he a psychic or a medium? Or no, I just think it was just a, a close enough tie okay. to where like Anne and Mary would have recognized, yeah. like, hey, we get it. Yeah. You know what that I mean? Sense. Have the mediums pretty much linked everything that you know about the area? Do they pick up on the same things that you know? So self-proclaimed self psychics, I can usually, first off, I'll spot them a mile away. Because um, if somebody comes up to me, that's the first thing they say. And they're like, oh, I actually have some sensitivities to stuff like this. I'm like, they're like, I'm a medium. I'm like, okay, so how many, what type of cards do you use? Like, what do you do? Oh, no, I just know stuff. So I actually withhold even more information to kind of test them. And the minute I like debunk what they have going on, they're like, oh, this is an evil place and blah, blah, blah. They do all of their spooky all shit. Right. They get pissed off and all of a sudden they have a headache and they need to go home. So again, I'm okay <laughs> with that. Um, but at the same time, like the people that are good, um, I will normally see that they all have the same patterns. So at, at this location, if it was a good practicing psychic or medium, they all see a soldier standing by that, that building wearing the same clothing which doesn't make sense to me. Blue pants, white shirt. You're in the South, should be gray pants, mm -hmm. right? If we're talking Civil War, because that was its last servant. This held gunpowder for seven different wars, but they all see the same soldier, angry, pissed off that I'm here, but doesn't move, just disgruntled that I'm here. And that's kind of the same type of mentality that they'll tell me. Um, so again, do I have probably four or five psychics that have been on the tour that have given me that exact same description? And that's how I know they're legit. Or they'll pull me aside and they'll say, did you know your grandmother's following you around? Yes, I did. Um, can you tell me, um, you know, and I'll ask them something specific. Yeah, like, can you tell me her birthday? Can you give me something to kind of clue in on that? And they'll either give me her name. They'll give me a very close um, phonetic sound of her last name, um, so forth and so on. But yeah. she does follow me around. And, and again, that's kind of how I'll verify did things. you know that ahead of time? That your grandma follows you? Know, like, can you oh, yeah, yeah. Her, so my her circle of up. friends is pretty much like this to me. So the ones that I trust anyway. Um, so yeah, it's a constant thing. And that's kind of, I don't want to say like that's how I prove like their abilities. Because again, you could do research on me. It's almost like you guys validate each other's yeah, exactly. uh, mm -hmm. experiences. Exactly. <coughs> so yeah. let's get to the answers of Ann Bonnie. And then we're going to go and blindfold some kids. How's that sound? <laughs> yeah. You can going to be right underneath there. We got to make sure you're not going to fall asleep under there. Give me something exciting. Oh yeah. I don't think the ghost will do that. <laughs> All right, so Anne Bonnie, this is one of the few pictures of this young lady that you can find where she actually has a shirt on. <laughs> the reason why is she used to bare a breast to show men that they were just killed by a woman. You have to remember she's wearing male pirate garb. And it was kind of like a ha ha, screw you, you were curled by a girl kind of mentality. Um, so obviously red hair, and we did get that direct answer, right? So uh, Alicia did ask, did you have red hair? And she actually got a yes. Um, so and that was the only yes, no thing that she asked all night, one, and, yeah. and it came up as a yes. Um, so the names of her parents, William Cormack, Mary Brennan. This was not another subliminal trick with the other Mary. Mary Brennan was actually a servant for the Cormack family. Now you can all assume and be correct about how dad met mom. So kind of put that two and two together. The name of the city where Anne grew up was Cork, Ireland. So that's been coming up more and more. Uh, I also like to show you what Calico Jack looked like, especially since we did hear his name directly. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and it's only because you all want to laugh and chuckle about what they based Johnny Depp's character off of. So Johnny, or Johnny Depp, Calico Jack was named that because of the jackets that he wore. They actually came from the British captains that he killed. So Jack's father was a, was a tailor. So textiles are very important to him. Calico Jack basically stands for fancy jacket. Depending on which pirate book you're reading, they also say that that's where fancy pants comes from. That doesn't make sense with the name Jack, does it? That's why I go straight with the fancy jacket. Um, so the name of his ship was called the Kingston. I do not expect the word Kingston to come out of our Charleston radio stations, but I would expect it out of Christina's device because it will pick up more disembodied voices than the rest of y'all's. Um, so the word King would actually suffice here. This is kind of a, what color is a big red barn? Blood is the answer kind of mentality. But the word King as a direct answer, I would take that from any one of you um, if that's what you heard by asking that direct question. Um, so take that for what it's worth. So um, I think you all have the gist of how this blindfold test is going to work at the next location. Is everybody familiar with AI imagery? Have you seen AI image being generated? No. Okay, perfect. Um, do you have it? I'll no, do a quick. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> all right, I'll do a quick demo, and it takes like two seconds, just so everybody kind of has a gist of what to expect out of you know what Patty's going to be seeing underneath there. Um, so I use Bing to create social media posts for me every day by telling it what kind of image to create, and then I just slap my logo on it and I make a funny post out of it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell Bing what I want it to create, and it'll give me four options. I'm going to just say it out loud so you guys can all hear it. It's like a lazy man meme. Pretty so. much. Is it like AI chat or chat AI or whatever it is? Create a cartoon style image of a church at night while it's raining with 11 people staring up at the church and a full moon in the background. I wanted to be very specific so that way you guys kind of got the gist of this. So, uh, we might not have great service. Oh, there we go. I'll try to create that. Yeah, thank you for that. And she's going to try to create four images for me. Sometimes it's only three if I go too specific. And then I get to choose what those images are that I want to use. So. You got any stick figures? Huh? What, what was that? Or is that the post? It Probably the post. Going, it keeps going like when I I get the bill and it keeps that going right really towards the window. Uh, on all sides. Oh, like, it does it everywhere. The whole, like the, the building itself, and it's like this window and it went on the other side okay and it always hooks to that window Maybe like a reflection or something maybe
Not on mine. <laughs> this town reminds me of New York City and Atlanta combining the Okay. I was thinking it'd be more for me. I haven't ever been to Louisiana, but I picture it being old looking. Uh -huh. Kind of like this. Yeah. That's a scary one. Stop the <laughs> How about drop my pants on that horn? Oh my gosh. Really? I wish our cars had those. It literally just did that. When it was coming here, couldn't hear anything out of that. It was just like all about the siren. Are you following us? Are you tired? But she said yes to the red hair. She said yes to red hair, so I, and she said yes to my and she not answered yes to any other Like our meeting. Yeah. Well, she got nice. mate. She, oh, she got, got mate. mate. And okay. she got dog, which she said. She, yeah, he died like was, a dog. Yeah, died like a dog. And then she just got arg. That's good stuff. You guys watch ghost shows on TV? Sometimes. Sometimes. I go to sleep. <laughs> you go to sleep too. I go to sleep Did you live a life? Watch a lot of different ones. I mean, there's there's some good shows out there. And honestly, they seem realistic. I know, and I'll be interested, so interested. And the next thing I know, I'm gone. I'm gone. Do you hear me? Puddle. You see something down there? No, but it's freaky. Can you make yourself known? Can you show yourself? Anybody? Just show yourself. Nothing. Mm -hmm. I got nothing. Me neither. Well, I can't really see it. Maybe there will be something when we look back. Yeah. There's George Washington. Yeah, we were just here earlier. Yeah. And the poet. We came right back here. There's the poet over there. There's the poet. <laughs> What's his name? I don't want to say Nimrod, but that's not right. Uh, Timrod. Timrod. That's good if uh, Timrod's here. It's Timrod. Is it, here. Can you tell me your name? It's just important. Can you at least say part of your name? What is your name? Just let us know you're here. Tell us the name.
everybody. Come around. Let me show you how this is actually going to work. shit Every bend is pretty much got water around it. It's, it's all right because it ain't your foot wet. <laughs> now my shoe's going to stink. <laughs> She's just happy to be here. All right, so um, I'm going to hand you guys the equipment. I'm going to take your camera. Let me put that away because we're not going to use that here. Since you're going to be head set it up. Um, now, when I give you guys this equipment, do not put this stuff on your face until we come back. Because if I'm blindfolding women in the middle of a dark park, it never looks good. Because we're going to be right over there. <laughs> so do not put the equipment on. And I will give you further details and instructions of what to expect out of this uh, when we come back. Um, so out of your piece is going to be nice and easy. I'll slide my phone in this guy when I come back. So hang on to that for me. Um, I'm also going to... The headset you can set right next to you, Maddie. Because... Patrick's going to have to put these on you because you're already going to be blindfolded. So just set those next to you or on your lap. And then I'm also going to hand you a disposable blindfold. I don't want it back. Keep your own eye boogers. Okay. Um, thank you, Amazon, for the Fifty Shades of Grey section. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're going to use it. Oh, okay. That's what you're using for this. Um, so, again, just kind of, you guys are going to sit here and chat for just a few minutes. I'm going to take them over to that monument, give them the history. We'll be gone maybe three to five minutes total. And then we're going to come back and talk to you as if you're the ghost. And then you're going to be telling us what you see in the crazy visuals. Um, so whatever vision I see, I tell you. Yep. Gotcha. Nice and simple. All right, let's go learn some history, guys. This will take a few minutes. First off, when we get over there, um, I want you guys to all kind of circle around nice and tight around them, uh, just because the other ghost tours, I don't think everybody's going to be out this late, especially in the rain, but I don't like them to see what the hell I'm doing um, and stealing my ideas. Not to mention blindfolding women in a dark park with another bunch of group of manly women. Um, so, I lost my tablet. Where the hell did it go? Well, at that point, it's just hazing. <laughs> yeah, right. It looks more like hazing than anything. It does look like hazing. Or something else. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not bad we, luck. We can all just stand around and go chug, chug, chug. I know, right? Um, so uh, we will be filming specifically, Stephanie, with your camera. Which, by the way, did I screw up anybody's name tonight? I think I had you all down pretty good. Okay, perfect. Um, so, Stephanie, you're going to be kind of the main focal point of filming, and you're going to keep it nice and steady because we get the best picture out of yours. Um, so with yours, Rick, you can kind of go around, but I still want a kind of a focus on them. Hers doesn't give us like the line people in front of it and all that stuff, so she's going to have the clearest view. You're kind of free to roam and give whatever shot we want to. Also, if I'm not getting answers out of Maddie, keep an eye on your spirit boxes. So yours, unfortunately, will be muted. Um, but if we do get words, they will show up on either the word list or something that was heard or something being spelled out for us. Mm -hmm. Are you um, asking questions? Like, yeah. This is what you're <laughs> told you I can't make this stuff up um, so here's how this goes this is the new space of the year so I don't really know still everything I probably need to but the first time I came in here was November of last year and I only had two people it was cold that night and the other party canceled right Patrick because people canceled yeah they were jerks. supposed to be here last oh. night um, um, <laughs> okay no well I had a party of four that was supposed to join him and Maddie okay and whenever there's down to two people I always text the remaining two people and see if they want to move to another group so they could yeah. see more devices yeah, and he opted to come see more um, so instead of me just taking two people out and driving in an hour each way, yeah. um, it's productive on all of our ends. Now, back to the, the young lady that was listening to the spirit box. She hears the year 1828, something very specific, and the name Henry. I'm using uh, Alicia's word list, and I have the name Tim that showed up on my word list. This bus behind me is Henry Timrod, born in 1828. I cannot, and I didn't even know what we were looking for in here yet. It was experimental because there's a lot of monuments in here. So here's his story, it's really quick. He's sick through most of his life, and he's a writer. Being born in 1828, he obviously wants to go fight in the Civil War for the Confederates because he's from Charleston. So he goes out to the battlefield. His comrades realize he's too sick to fight. Knowing he was a writer, they sent him home and said, go be the voice of the war. They wanted him to write what was going on on the battlefield to tell the general public. So he came home and started writing poetry. He became known as the Laureate of the Confederacy. For those of you unfamiliar with the writing world, that's a prestigious title. Mm -hmm. Now, he has a son a few years after he gets going with his writing and he's getting a little bit of fame. Not a whole lot of fortune, but some fame. And his son's name is Willie. He's born on Christmas Eve and he dies nine months later, October 23rd, three days from now. This is his anniversary. So, obviously a very tragic death for him and his wife, Katie. So you're going to need to know that name. 
Um, but a couple more years go by and he's not writing as much. And his college buddy, who's also another writer from Charleston, Paul Hayne Hamilton, realizes he's not writing as much. He says, go use my cottage in the middle of Columbia, uh, it's the middle of the state, and leave Katie behind to mourn with her parents that were here visiting. So he goes out there to get back on track and that's where he wrote his last words. His last words were, beholder of brief mortality, meaning dear person with a short life. And then he coughed and it landed on the page in a blood stain. He had tuberculosis. Now, interesting thing about, and he died right there on the page, by the way. Um, that blood stain looks like a man writing at his desk. So it was a perfect mark for him to leave behind. So we call this the blood book and we only show it one day a year at the uh, Charleston Library Society where his collection is being held. And you have to be a member of the Library Society to be able to go see it. But the internet's beautiful. I'm gonna show you what the hell the damn page looks like. And then we're gonna go treat Maddie as if she was Henry Timrod. So let me show you what this page looks like. And uh, when I give them their little tips and tricks of what to expect, you might wanna pay attention to that as well. Oh, so, wow. Oh, wow. So dear Whoa. person of short life, cough, cough, death, this is what we get. <laughs> Yeah, we call this the blood book. Now, I will tell you that one of the images that showed up just a few weeks ago um, would look like, picture a crocheted toy of a baby. Like it was a crocheted baby. And it was in that exact shape. Mm -hmm. Like I actually did an overlap, like transparency, mm -hmm. so they can see how close it was. And I wasn't even the one that caught it. One of my guests caught it. They're like, that looks just like the blood book. And I was like, holy shit, it does. So when I went back to the office, I'm pretty crafty with pictures. I was able to opaque it and put a transparency over top to show like how close it actually was. Um, so that's kind of how this is going to go. Let's go talk to them and see what we can get out of this answer of a ghost. You post some of your old stuff that you've found? Everything for the past year is on my website. Okay. Like, it's a lot of info. see things clearly in there? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So, oh, close. Good. your focal point, in case you do get a little blurry, is right here. <laughs> so you just turn the dial and see, see things straight. Okay. So when I slide this in there, I'll give you direction. Okay. I'm going to delete all of the pictures that were last seen from the last tour. So you can see these fresh. Yeah, there. Oh, yeah. And the earbud. Slide that in there and you'll put that thing over here. I know, I'm trying to give you a I know, right? You're going to see gray smoke in there. Okay, so if you're going to tell us anything that's not gray smoke, it's not going to be 3D in your face. It's going to be a 2D image floating in front of that smoke. 
So again, I like to warn people ahead of time that it's not going to be okay. like some in-your-face dinosaur trying to eat your face off. Well, that'd be awesome, then. It would. <laughs> well, you can. I'm this is. Yeah, you're going to tell us anything that's not Grace Smart. You're going to tell us anything that's not Grace Smart. Writing things. Um, yeah. Now, this is my phone. So if my wife is sending you dirty yeah. pictures in the middle of the night, just let us know what you see, okay? Okay, we'll do it. Okay, that way I know what I'm going home to. Okay. <laughs> All right. I love it. Get Okay, she's under. Yep. Okay. You have your volume on. Turn your volume up. Okay. It is 11:34. It's right here. And on. I just have both of them in free. Yeah, perfect. So I just start now? If you see something, you tell us what you see. I see a man and a woman. Perfect. Looking like they pray in. Okay. Long you... hair. Look like Indian, kind of, sort of, maybe. Oh, interesting. Henry Timrod. Maddie, can you hear us? Perfect. Henry Timrod, if you can push through for us. I know it's a rainy night, but fortunately for us, we are the only folks here. I know you don't like crowds. I'm going to keep it nice and simple. I'm going to ask you to show us one of the tools that you had to use for your work, or if you want to just tell us what you did for your occupation. This is Maddie. She can hear you. This is Patty. Patty and Maddie. That was bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, she can actually see whatever you want us to see. We're using both methods tonight. And yes, keep an eye on that because we have seen high EMF in this location. Um, it's been all the way up to 167, just so you know. Henry Timrod, can you push through? I don't know who this man and woman are in this image. Keep an eye on that word list too. We never know what's going to pop up. Can you remind her to tell us what she's hearing, please? Henry, I really need you to push through. We're using all of the other boxes too, so you can feel free to use any of those to communicate back to us. I would prefer that you spoke through Maddie. Kind of use her as your own voice. Tell us what your occupation is, please. Henry, can you give us an image? It seems like Maddie's struggling by hearing what you want us to hear. We'll take an image in the green box. She's holding it up to her face. You got something, Patty? Henry? Did I give you guys a minute? Was recording. Yes. How's our words? We got anything coming up? We Into something I don't normally ask about. Can you tell us what kind of facial hair you had? Maybe you can show us a picture of what kind of facial hair you had. It's very distinguished. You've done it before. I haven't asked in a long time. She's hearing something. Can you? Maddie, 
video, right? That is a lot to handle, just so you guys know. she needs. We're going to have the recording. We're going to rely on visuals. So Henry, I'm going to need you to push through with visuals only at this point and kind of let us know some of the questions that I normally ask. I'm asking about your facial hair. That's good. Henry, I'm going to ask if you are the only one here tonight. You can answer a yes no on one of the boxes that we're also listening to. Maddie needed to take a break, so you need to use all the other communication devices to kind of answer us. If you're not here alone, show us a picture of who's actually here with you. Patty's gonna fall asleep unless you show her something. Please, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a rolling cloud of smoke in there. I so. see it. The thing is, I'm getting the eyes. Henry, I've asked you some simple questions. Let's go into something a little bit further. Can you tell me more about your son? getting pretty close to his anniversary of his death date, and I know that that's a sore subject, but let's ask about his birth, because that was a pretty happy time for you. Can you tell me what holiday he was born on? What holiday was your son born on? You can show us in the green box, or you can tell us on some of the other devices. We're not asking for much tonight. Just a few images to verify that you're here. Maybe a few answers. We got anything going on, ladies? And nothing being spelled out? Mary, you hearing anything? No, nothing else okay. that I can make out other than those two phrases. Henry, let's verify that you're here by you telling us to leave and go home. How about that? If you want us to leave, we'll leave. You just got to tell us. Henry, you can show us a picture of a door. We'll take the hint. Wow, one image so far. We only got two minutes left. I would keep proceeding. Henry's on the clock. Oh, we're here. Gotta make himself known. Henry. I know this has been a hard month. I want to also point out that this is also the same month of Henry's death as well. So uh, October 6th and October 23rd, like we're smack right in the middle of that. Yeah. You know, between him and his son. Like this has not been a good month for this, I'll be quite honest. Like it's been pretty light. Um, just because I'm poking a bear during the time frame of, of, of remorse. That's probably what it was at the beginning. You know, and I guess white or whatever. He didn't have long hair though. What kind of long hair? Was it shoulder length or like down his back? No, it wasn't down his back. It was right past his shoulders, but it was a light color. Mm -hmm. Keith With a tattoo. It was, there was a tattoo on his well, arm. Oh, wow. The oh. person's oh. arm right here. Okay. Henry, we're going to say goodnight. Can you say goodnight back to us? Yeah. Cool if you can draw a letter. I think I'm gonna call it on this one. Where's the rest of that? I still want to follow up with Maddie. So Patty, go ahead and take that thing off your face. We're gonna call it. We all want to see the image that you did see. First up, are you okay? It's a lot, isn't it? Okay. I'm glad we got you out of there pretty quickly. Thank you for knowing her signs. I